Talks by Economica. Economica is a student venture that strives to bring all resources related to economics under one umbrella. Our aim is to bridge the information asymmetry in economics by building a community of econ aspirants. Econ Talks is an initiative by Economica to bridge this information asymmetry in live issues. In today's episode, we attempt to explore and learn more about space economics. India has come a long way from 1990 in the space industry. We have been able to send space mission at cost that is lower than the budget of many Bollywood movies. Thoughts, ideas, discussions and explorations have evolved in multiple folds ever since Voyager 1 described the Earth as a pale blue dot. The power of space as we now know it is beyond description. To think and establish the relationship between space and economics might be new to at least for a lot of us. So how is space and economics related? Let's hear it from the expert we have with us today, Dr. Shaijumon C.S., Associate Professor and Head at the Indian Institute of Space Science and Technology. Welcome to Econ Talk, sir. Thank you for joining us today. So, uh, we'll directly move on to the first question. Having an academic background in economics, how did you land in countries one of the most premier space tech centers? Were you fascinated by space in the childhood days? What is your journey? Can you describe that? Yeah, uh, actually, it's a very interesting question. Uh, if you if you ask me about my experience or my uh, passion towards joining this Institute of Indian Institute of Space Science and Technology is quite uh, kind of like you know my passion towards science also. Uh, uh, during my school days, I was fascinated with science, uh, especially the experimental aspects of science. Uh, I believe that science is in everything. If you wanted to study economics or if you wanted to study even languages or if you wanted to have a good life, science is behind that. So if you can understand the nuances of science, I believe I understood that you can actually understand the subject very well. So economics, I found it even from the from the degree uh, uh, age onwards or degree studies time onwards i felt like you know economics is a subject that actually we should approach in a scientific way uh, means that you know it's a lot of experimental aspects are there in the science and another thing is if you wanted to solve a problem of in the sense like an you know, economic problem of the country or if you wanted to solve the real life economic problems definitely you need interdisciplinary approach uh, pure economic theories or pure economic approach cannot solve economic problems. Many people said about that. So, uh, space science and technology, that's how I fascinated because, you know, that flavor of science that I had. Uh, also, I wanted to actually solve certain problems if I can in a small way. I'm an economic student even now, so I'm learning economics and that actually uh, end up in, uh, you know, joining uh, this institute. One more reason is there that actually I got exposed to experimental economics when I was there in the US uh, with a scholarship named Fulbright Scholarship. Uh, almost three years I was there in the US teaching and research and such things. Then I understood the nuances of uh, economics, like you know, various interdisciplinary aspects of economics like you know space economics i got idea from there and nobody was doing that time space again because this is about you know the time period i was talking about 2004 2006 time uh, 2009 that, 2007 that time and uh, i i i got interested that time in neuroeconomics there is another uh, branch of economics like that you know whenever i uh, read about science and economics together i felt like you know i am understanding economics more as well as I, I am getting some kind of idea that you know I can solve some kind of problems and give some ideas to uh, solving the real life economic problems. That's why I, I, I haven't thought about anything. I was working somewhere in other colleges, government college. Then I happily joined in Indian Institute of Space Science and Technology uh, and take up this job. Hmm. That's actually very well put together when we think about how economics and science are itself very related and how they go hand in hand. So speaking about IIST, what is the role of an economist in a center that is related to space science? Actually, this was the question that I asked, you know, then Chairman Isro about, you know, what am I going to do in, 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 in this institute? And he said that we have a clear vision. So space scientists, if you wanted to mold a good space scientist, uh, they believe that uh, the, the, the students or the scientists has to know about the economy of the country the economic pulse of the country 
and the uh, yeah, economic problems of the people and uh, then only they can become a good scientists of uh, indigenous nature so that is their idea so they have to get sensitized about the various economic problems confronting in the country so that is the question i got then i was so interested i i teach here actually introductory economics for the undergraduate students and um, space economics for the final year uh, degree students and I, we also actually i also teach advanced economics for our phd students we have a phd program in economics as well so then these are the roles along with that the research is a major component uh, i have various projects of one one project right now is running is actually the usage of telemedicine uh, the impact of telemedicine during the time of covid uh, this is sponsored by uh, indian council of social science research government of india so they, that that project is actually national wide project is going on it's almost completed and the other project is actually estimation of space economy of india this actually i am doing along with the center for development studies and uh, national institute of advanced studies so we three with our two professors from these two institutions and myself we together actually estimating the size of space economy already we estimated and published on paper in in uh, space policy journal and we are actually now estimating the indirect impacts of space economy of india oh okay that's that's actually really interesting the kind of work that is not known to lot of us even as students in economics we are still you know not in the light about all this so going to an international perspective the race to strategically position each country in the space is has been rising ever since the cold war so why do nations compete with each other instead of collaborating for a position in space uh, actually that vaishnavi that this statement also is not true right now maybe now the if you if you carefully observe these countries like maybe you are referring to china or like usa uh, now the current russia so these are the countries now started collaborating in space because you know uh, the, there are actually growing uh, private ecosystem in the world in space investment and uh, space technology development so there you know definitely the countries has to collaborate with uh, this private in- entrepreneurs if you look at uh, the investments also you can see that the, the companies like spacex actually investing more than and the, the 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 other government investments right now so then in that in this situation definitely i think i don't believe that you know now the uh, in future or currently there will be a race for uh, space technology exploration or space investments everybody has to come together uh, has to come together for you know that uh, invest, uh, investing in space because it's a such a risky investment uh, therefore uh, every country's ideas every country's investments are very important so if you look at the uh, establishment of space station international space station or like you know artemis accord uh, recently actually india also discussed with the us and all these actually uh, you can see that Uh, countries are collaborating each other for various various programs so india is also collaborating if you look at the development of space science and technology of india right from the beginning in 1960s till now we have been collaborating with various countries like you know initially we were collaborate more with ussr later on actually to usa even to uh, other uh, european space agency and various other space agency india is now one of the leading space faring nations of the world because actually now now if you look at uh, right now uh, all these countries are collaborating to to establish critical infrastructure for for uh, for uh, facilitating private investments in the country so this will lead to major exploration of space in the world so coming to a more of a poverty or you know economics aspect we see a general opinion of how people say that we should be solving issues such as poverty instead of sending rockets and missiles to outer space and mars so what is your take on that and how would a common man benefit from space missions like chandrayaan yeah actually uh, one would actually should understand that uh, what is poverty everywhere poverty is everywhere especially a developing country like india we one of the pressing problems of the country is actually poverty Uh, the destitute is also increasing many a time whenever this space exploration space investments happens this question arises like you know what should be our priority uh, that my belief is this is because of sheer ignorance about what space technology can do 
for eradicating poverty in the country so if you see various aspects of space technology if you take like say for example telecommunication or like you know remote sensing technology or various technologies if you take these are all actually in in a way this is eradicating poverty in the country say for example one 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 is one thing that i am i'm conducting right now this study about telemedicine you can see that this is because of space based telemedicine uh, in a, without any uh, uh, you know uh, lag you can provide seamless services to the people real time services say for example a remote village person a poor person a poverty ridden person he cannot actually get access to a good doctor in a good hospital he it's kind of a distant dream he, he he or she doesn't even know that you know is there any facility available in somewhere so through this space based telemedicine uh, you can see that uh, within the village he or she can sit there in the village and get the uh, uh, good expert opinion or like you know accessibility to this uh, doctors in good hospitals that is happening right now like all india institute of medical sciences or like you know uh, this uh, uh, apollo hospital and all they are having this telemedicine uh, in a in a very effective way and uh, even in kerala like you know amrutha institute of medical sciences they have this like you know space based telemedicine and even the surgeries are done through uh, remote way or robotic arms are now started using surgery so then from a us doctor he he uh, doctor can actually do the surgery from there through the telemedicine services so this kind of developments are happening so definitely that is one thing another thing is actually you would have heard about this uh, um, space telecommunications impacts or like navigation one example i'll tell you many people don't know that you know atms Uh, automated teller machines are working based on space technology there is actually technology named vsat terminals very small aparsi terminals are there so banks are established that so the real time data actually transferring through satellites to the various banks and the people that's why when you withdraw uh, money so immediately that you will get message and then you know that where where it is done and then all his money get transacted internationally everything so space is there and you you take the case of like you know stock market so if if satellites are not there stock market won't function properly so you take anything like you know governance you take like you know space based governance is there uh, now you know that about you know the popular uh, catch name right now is gig economies gig economy if you take the major portion is actually because of space navigation tools are using like one example i'll tell you that you know somato or siggy or uh, those food delivery people they are actually delivering food at Home. this is primarily because you have this real time data transfer through satellites so and you have navigation data like you know you are finding places you are going any place that you want through the space based solutions india also developed its own uh, you know navigation platform named bhuvan that the immediate uh, very soon it will come to the mobile phones and all you can get the directions to anywhere in the world through that so ultimately this is these are all actually eradicating poverty of the people uh, another thing is food production you can see that you you have the remote sensing maps like agricultural production for productivity or fishing all these things you need space based solutions like space is there sat- satellite is known as eye in the sky from from the sky it is looking everywhere and data real time data they are getting and even production productivity pricing i conducted a study among the fishermen uh, in that fishermen i found that uh, through the boats you know they won't get signal through mobile phones inside the sea so from the satellites they'll get satellite signals and also satellites will tell the fishermen that where the fish actually located so that will save their cost and time and uh, not only that satellites also can connect it to the pricing markets so then from the markets actually they will get the price real time price at which shore has actually uh, higher prices so then with fish the boats can land to that places so in that way because of surplus catch you won't actually lose the prices or the profit otherwise in economics we know that when there is surplus production price will come down and they will suffer so from the sea itself they are getting the information they can go and uh, sell their fish wherever they want by using this information so these are all various this is like very small number i said like that many many uses are there uh, for eradicating the poverty of the people you know when we talk about poverty still people have apprehensions that you know why we have to go to moon for alleviating poverty 
so here i wanted to tell you some facts about you know this uh, chandrayaan mission maybe again i wanted to explain it by using one of the economic theorem maybe you'd have heard about this you know production possibility curve so every countries are now uh, trying to shift their production possibilities curve up either through actually improvement in finding new resources or improving technology and productivity increasing productivity so then you know you just think from that direction you can see that you see why countries are actually going after moon because this two three important points are there one is moon is actually f- having full of lot of minerals and materials available which is very very useful for the country's development one example is actually helium 3 is available in moon this is actually if you can bring back that which can actually solve the problems of energy in the country so that is one mission so when other countries are doing this moon mission india also wanted to have that place there so we wanted to we wanted to take that stick and then in future if some uh you know uh, extraction of minerals happens so we can also be there right now the international treaties are not allowing that there is a treaty named moon treaty but it is not related to moon moon treaty means actually that you know celestial bodies are actually uh, you cannot control celestial bodies outer space is actually belong to everyone now you have to understand what is space space is actually above 100 kilometers from earth which is known as karman line that is above it is space so above that 100 kilometers it is everybody's territory nobody can actually name nobody can take position nobody can control that area so then in future maybe we don't know the resources after finding resources after at space tourism comes you know people may go to other celestial bodies and take that so this is one reason that you know lot of rich minerals i said only one example number 2 countries wanted to make moon as a second launch pad why because you know the gravitational influence of moon is very very less so you don't need this much of money to launch from moon two things one from moon when you launch you can achieve greater heights and go, you can cover uh, outer planets more you can get a distance you can go because you are you know escape you know you can actually escape from the moon very easily than you are escaping from earth because of gravitational pull uh, this is leading to actually you need only less fuel and you can actually start uh, missions from moon how do you do that there you know you can actually uh, uh, make fuel also there because there the water uh, already indian uh, earlier chandrayaan mission invented their uh, discovered water was there right so the water can be divided into hydrogen and oxygen from that you can actually make the future uh, fuel like you know li- liquid oxygen and all and then that you can use it for space launches from there so you don't need to take anything from here and then you can explore and the cost will be very less also third thing is you look at the chandrayaan particularly chandrayaan uh, you know this th- uh, third mission you can see that uh, the cost is very less we spend only around 600 crores you know that you in the beginning itself you asked that question about like you know it's less than a bollywood movie maybe 600 crores so you have to compare this with the mission of uh, us uh, uh, russia russia same time there was a luna mission to moon and that time indian rupees they spend about 1600 crores india spend only 600 crores but the difference is they actually Uh, their mission expected to reach there within 10 days and then our mission actually we expected we our mission we reached there only after 40 days so why the difference they actually spend huge amount of money to break this gravitational pull and then uh, you know uh, took heavy vehicle and uh, used a lot of uh, fuel and then reached uh, uh, they tried to reach but that mission failed they could not reach they could not actually land on the moon finally they, they, their mission failed but india we used a method named the kissling shot method because we launched uh, the satellite in the earth orbit and then actually boosted the satellite up and up slowly and the orbital change happened and finally we made it to the capturing to the moon's orbit then we deboosted that slowly and then it it came down down and down near to moon and then finally we landed on the moon so they, that's why we took 40 days but the difference is we spend only 600 crores they spend 1600 crores so this is another thing so where this is moon is actually treasure trove of a lot of minerals materials which can be useful for earth and next thing is if a colony 
when we start like you know that you know 18% of the world population is in india india is the largest populous country right now so then in future if you wanted to export some people or uh, transport some people from here to moon so in uk moon is actually the major place you can also have a claim we don't know Uh, what whether this is going to happen or not so in that way these are all going to benefit the country in future it's for the economic development of the country so moon mission also it's for the economic development of the country very clearly very clearly we spend only less money but we actually made and uh, achieved larger goals surely i guess understanding this itself the government has initiated the indian space economy policy of 2023 so uh, what is your take on that how, how do you think it will have biggest impact on indian space economy yeah uh, actually uh, space policy uh, the cabinet has approved on april 2023 very recently this has been discussing in the country and isro and various agencies for the last couple of years and uh, mostly uh, this allowed private participation in the space sector not privatization private participation in the sense that you know private parties also can come inside india in an indian space economy and then they can also invest in space sector they can actually develop uh, launch vehicles they can develop satellites they can launch satellites uh, so then the business will improve so why we actually went into this time and there are a lot of questions about that you know we failed to implement this very early like we introduced the new liberal policies in 1991 but that time onwards people were actually talking about you know the private participation in space sector also but we never did that during that time even before that also many many pressure was there but we were having actually close collaboration with the private industries right from the beginning uh, you know space sector uh, uh, space sector development if you look historically continuously uh, the space the sector development actually associated with the private industries right now i am trying to conduct a study about the contribution of space to the space industry i mean industry private industry of india right from the beginning so that means private participation was there earlier also but as a policy we introduced in 2000 uh, 23 april the cabinet has approved now more private investments will come uh, because now we got the we got the confidence to open up because we have we have made all the critical infrastructure you would have heard about this uh, you know uh, the theory says economic theory says that you know when we have the more public investments there there may be a crowding out of private investment but actually if you look at right now recently at least in the space sector of the country you can see that because of huge private in public investments uh, this is actually attracting more private investments it's not crowding out it's it's leading to crowding in so uh, the critical infrastructure has been created almost all areas like you know launch vehicle technology space satellite development navigation controls everything you know india has its own capability in now human space mission also we are actually going to go very soon within one or two years actually that is also going to materialize we have gone to the uh, moon and we have gone to mars and we are actually planning uh, already uh, you know aditya l1 mission is there with the sun and we are planning asteroid missions and outer planet moon various other planet missions and very soon we can see that within uh, in a half the decade or so we can see that uh, human being is there in the space from india india so uh, using our own technology so that means this space policy is going to give huge philip to all those kind of vision visionary uh, yeah, you know outlook about the future missions of the country so uh, private huge private investments will come that will actually increase innovation and invest invention competition will actually definitely enhances competitive efficiency space tourism also actually will will come in a big way when private investments come uh, so definitely this is going to be the game changer uh, in the in the indian economy especially when we talk about space economy of the country hmm that is uh, that is actually leading to the next question that i had in my mind because uh players like spacex and blue origin with them space tourism is actually catching up so what economic opportunities and challenges uh will we have in space tourism uh, if you look at the critical technologies that we have in you know, in india right now we are actually on par with all the top most nations like us uh you know european space agency china or russia 
so if you look at the launch vehicle technology we have this very robust launch vehicles like you know pslv gslv and uh, lvm3 vehicle and now ssl sslv also so all these vehicles actually definitely is going to give a big boost to the space tourism industry in india and we have also uh, the growing upper class middle cl- upper 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 income middle class people so then uh, they will definitely choose space tourism so they will explore and uh, we are actually going to facilitate that also uh, adding to this this private investments also coming definitely this is going to be a big robust future that is ahead for india in terms of space tourism for sure so we are going to gain more income from space tourism right um so we have had a long conversation about space and space economics how do you think that giving education to the youth regarding space and space economy will benefit uh our country in the future yeah um now right now if you look at uh, this uh, education system of the country uh, students are very much fascinated about space they may be fascinated about you know uh, the planets or outer space and the such things but there is no option that the students can understand the connection between space and economic development or economic growth so really actually even economic students are not understanding about how it is connected so if this kind of connections through various experiments if we can introduce in the school curriculum that will fascinate the students more not only the scientific fascination but also space is a terrain space is a area that we can use it for solving various problems of the country in future development and i don't know whether you heard about this fourth industrial revolution which is going on right now so there were three industrial revolutions now the fourth industrial revolutions are going on with very critical technologies like you know artificial intelligence data analytics internet of things uh, you know robotics space technology uh, you know all these kind of technologies if you look you can see that these technologies are not independent technologies these are all actually co influence of various technologies you need various disciplinary understanding to develop such technologies if you take all these technologies you can see that space technology is the key technology or the nucleus of all these technologies because if you wanted to function any other technologies that i is mentioned now you need space technology so some remote control from somewhere so this is actually the order of the day say for example now we are think, uh, talking about uh, uh, remote or driverless cars or like intelligent traffic management system these are all going to come because of space is there or satellites are there so space is going to revolutionize this fourth industrial revolution huge economic activities are going to happen so the students from their childhood days they have to fascinate they have to think about various ideas uh, i think they, they definitely fascination is has to be there but fascination has to translate it into ideas that some kind of support has to be there idea actually good Uh, you know slowly get convert into some kind of actionable items so for that you need proper directions so if in your curriculums and all you can clearly say about the connection between space and economic development and space and economic growth or as we mentioned earlier like various aspects of space and you know uh, the solving various problems of the country and the people then more students will fascinated about that uh, i i wanted to tell you about uh, another thing what is this uh, space economy all about many people don't know what is space economy i thought you will ask that question like you know the space economy is kind of like you know all activities related to space which is actually in the form of like utilization or creating uh, values in space or various like you know advantages that generating from space all these activities right from space exploration space experiments uh, or you know space usages all these activities together generating lot of economic activities all these together is known as space economy of an economy so space economy is going to be the key driver for for economic development in any economy take the case of indian economy right now we are talking about uh, reaching to 5 5 trillion dollar economy maybe by 2025 or like you know we are aspiring to become a developed country by 2047 or 2050 amrit kal and all we are talking about so if you wanted to really reach to that position definitely we have to use the maximum potential of space technology in every aspects of the life space is there every aspects you take the new name any aspect you can see that space is there so in that way this this space economy also you can divide into three categories 
അപ്സ്ട്രീം സ്പേസ് ആക്ടിവിറ്റീസ് ഡൗൺ സ്ട്രീം സ്പേസ് ആക്ടിവിറ്റീസ് ഓർ ഡിറൈവ്ഡ് ഓർ ആക്സിലറി സ്പേസ് ആക്ടിവിറ്റീസ് അപ്സ്ട്രീം സ്പേസ് ആക്ടിവിറ്റീസ് മീൻസ് ഓൾ ദി സ്പേസ് you know uh, launch vehicles or like satellite making or controls and those things we known as upstream space activities downstream means you know there's the impacts of space activities direct impacts of space activities for solving various issues even the governance telemedicine i mentioned uh, you know that the remote sensing technology using for agriculture production or connectivity or all these things we can say that downstream activities and the other sector is also there axillary activities or derived activities there are a lot of activities like say for example spin offs uh, one spin off is actually you would have heard about this jaipur food nobody knows that you know jaipur food is actually using it for uh, ambulated uh, you know the leg an artificial legs that is constructing on on company actually made this but this material actually invented by isro space indian space agency that uh, you know that that material on on uh, industry came and innovate and they actually found that this is very good this is very very strong material which is weightless can be used it for this artificial uh, food so then they started making it like that lot of invention technology materials available with uh, the space agency of india and the companies have to come forward and they have to actually what innovate they have this is known as actually spin off spin ins so spin in uh, i mean the spin uh, 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 spin offs no spin ins also there spin offs so spin offs are also another area that you know lot of companies can come and lot of economies can generate so uh, if you look at the space economy generation upstream activities are less we tend to think that because of space at uh, launch vehicle making or satellite making lot of economy is generating no not not lot of money is generating from that actually from this uh, downstream and derived activities generate more economic activities the other one is just technology development only so there you have limited uh, amount of money but all these multiplier impact or multiplier effect is happening uh, in the downstream and uh, derived activities so that multiplier impacts you have to look measure so there the employment opportunities are there employment generation is there so then lot of economic activities are happening so then that will actually lead to more space economy generation and thereby gdp growth of the economy so india definitely have to explore that area so i i believe that as i mentioned earlier space policy of india is also going to give very big big boost to that area so now the people are very clear in uh, entrepreneurs are very clear that you know where we can invest what we can do in the economy right um speaking about the youth you mentioned how fascination turns into ideas and then into actions with the right direction so what do you think is the best skills and knowledge they youth should focus on as we end this podcast or this video what is your message to the youth yeah definitely uh, you know we have to actually get rid of the disciplinary boundaries that we have right now maybe the new education policy is also saying like that if you wanted to a real good economist if you wanted to really wanted to solve the problems of an economy problems of the people definitely you have to think beyond the disciplinary boundaries that opportunity we have to give it to the youth or the students of economics there you need a certain kind of skill sets that's what that you know the students are not aware about say for example if a person wanted to venture into space economy he or she has to have some kind of interest in space so then space reading and then you know start thinking and connecting with economic theories i said about you know crowding out and crowding in effect and i said about multiplier impacts i said about you know maybe we can think about this you know that uh, opportunity cost and lot of concepts that you know you just start connected to this area and then you need some kind of skills like you know software skills econometric analysis and you know data analysis techniques and all you should learn and then that will help you to actually taking long way first of all that data analysis statistical techniques and all you can learn and you know that is a secondary thing but you have to have the mindset of coming out of the discipline and then connect your discipline with various other discipline and start thinking about the real life problems of the economy and then you know you can solve the problems so if you have that urge in your mind and that thinking definitely you can also actually uh, get into various this kind of interdisciplinary nuances of economics economics is such a wonderful subject you can connect it to any subject you 
tell any you name any subject you can beautifully connect it to any subjects of the world so that only thing is you need to have that kind of mindset so i urge all the students and the youth those who are passionate about economics you just actually think out of the box and think you know new things and then don't roll stuck only to the theories age old theories which actually we learn from the economic sub uh, textbooks but you go beyond that and explore more and connect your theories with real life and other subjects and solve the problems of the economy that's actually very accurately put together how economics and space is related and how that must reach out to the youth So I guess that brings us to the end of this podcast and thank you so much sir for joining us and sharing these wonderful ideas and thoughts with us. Thank you. Thank, thank you and my pleasure.